So setting up phones in Go High Level. Obviously, if you want to send any texts or make any calls, you're going to need to uh, either connect Go High Level to Twilio or use their uh, their version of Twilio, I guess you can call it, which is just lead connector phone system. It's very good. It's very stable. Um, I think the quality is a little bit better than Twilio. Uh, I have a lot less dropped calls. Uh, so I would suggest using lead connector. But how you're going to set this up if you're on a fresh go high level, if you're brand new to it and you haven't done this already, go into the agency level. So you, you do not want to be in one of your sub accounts. Hit agency level right here. Um, and make sure you're on the agency level, hit settings, hit phone integration, and then right here, uh, you're going to hit connect to lead uh, connector phone system, you'll connect it, and then um, you'll have to enter some card information, so make sure you do that. It's going to charge you just a dollar to basically verify that the card is valid, and then after that, you're going to hit sub account settings, and we're going to link it to these sub accounts. Okay, that we have created. And now the these specific phone accounts or these specific sub accounts can use the phone system. Um, and then just enable this um, so that all new sub accounts are automatically linked up to the phone system. Okay, so now that we have that set up, let's go into the sub account and actually purchase a phone number. Um, it might take a minute to load. We'll see if We'll see if we're set up or not yet. Hit settings, uh, hit phone numbers, and then, okay, cool, we are set up. Hit ignore, and let's purchase a phone number, and we'll get into A2P later in this video. Um, but for now, let's just purchase a phone number, and what I would suggest is always, uh, let's say we have a client in Miami, we want to use a Miami area code, right? This is the phone number that all of our texts will be sent from. So if we're following up with leads in Miami, we want to use a Miami area code. It's It looks more legitimate to them. They're more likely to answer the phone if we call. Um, they're more likely to uh, read the text if we send them a text and it comes from a local area code, right? It just, there's no reason not to. It doesn't change the cost or anything. So we'll type in a local area code, we'll hit search, and then a few numbers will pop up. Okay, let's go ahead and purchase one. Cool. So now we have uh, a phone number and let's edit the settings and go over all the settings in here. So we're gonna hit the little pencil and we can name this phone number, right? So we can name this, um, I don't know, let's name it just default. <laughs> okay, if we want to forward calls, so Go High Level does not have the ability to accept incoming calls. So if you were to call this phone number that you just purchased, it will show up as a missed call in Go High Level. You cannot actually answer that call and speak with someone unless you forward them. So you can forward these calls to a cell phone. If you have a Skype phone number, you can forward them to a Skype phone number. If you're using open phone, which is what I recommend everybody uses, it's just the best virtual phone number for business. Um, you can forward them to open phone or whatever phone number you want to forward them to, you can do here. So I'll just type in my business phone number, I guess. Um, I see. So what this means, um, I've never used this before. What this means is if someone was to call the GHL number, it forwards it to this, you would see their phone number. Or if you want to see your go high level number, you would press this. I think that's I'm interpreting that correctly. <clears throat> I've never used it. Um, but yeah, you guys can test this out if you want. Um, Okay, so <clears throat> I think this is if you want to um, set up a custom caller ID, you can do that. Again, I've never used this, um, but you can do that here. Um, 
I always turn this off. So this feature requires that the receiver press a key in order to connect the call. This will result in higher accuracy for call reporting. I would definitely, uh, I would turn this off. So we just want to remove, anytime we're trying to contact a lead or a lead is contacting us, we want to remove as much resistance as possible. Um, we also don't want to let them think that we are uh, a robot. We want to always seem like a real person. So I would turn this off. Um, whisper message, always turn this off. Um, this is something that the call or that you would hear before you get connected to them. Um, so if you're forwarding the calls, it would say call from, I don't know, call from uh, Zach Pasco's sub account. Really, you should just set up uh, caller ID so you understand where these calls are coming from. Uh, call recording. <clears throat> I would definitely turn call recording on. You don't want this message to be uh, tech. Okay, we're, we're kind of getting back into the realm of breaking the rules here, so I'm not making any recommendations. However, what I do is I just put a period or a full stop, depending on where you're from, uh, so that the lead does not hear this call is being recorded for quality assurance. If they hear that, they might hang up. They're going to know that it's not, or they might think that it's not just a real person. Um, so I put a period here. It, it will skip that notification um, and it will still record the calls however you're not supposed to do this so don't do it okay incoming call timeout um, outbound call timeout I just leave these uh, set to default if you're making if you're doing like power dialing through leads and you don't want to get their voicemail you can set up like 18 seconds uh, this is actually what I do a lot of the times um, and then incoming you can just let the you can let it ring, or you can set it up to 30 seconds. Um, I just leave it off, and then I forward the calls to a call that has voicemail set up. Uh, you can set up voicemail on open phone, uh, so that's why I just leave this uh, the way it is. So it would just get um, it would just get to this phone's voicemail. Uh, however, outbound call. If you want to leave voicemails for people, you guys can just turn this off, um, or if you want to automatically hang up the phone after 18 seconds. Uh, if they don't answer, you can do this. Okay. Now, let's get into A2P. I know a lot of you guys are going to have uh, a few questions. But <clears throat> before we do this, before we touch on A2P specifically, um, one thing, kind of like a prerequisite to A2P, is I would set up the business profile. So this is just information about the business, about your, make sure this is client-specific. Um, and you're going to have to get some information from them and they're just going to have to give it to you. Tell them that it's legally, you have to do it in order to run the campaign. They shouldn't have an issue. You could even get this. You could even pull this up with them on the onboarding call. If, if they're really like scared of giving you their information for whatever reason, you can say, look, we have to submit this uh, by law. We're doing this because we're running uh, campaigns for you. We're nurturing leads for you, and we need to be compliant. But I would definitely submit the business profile first. If you guys can wait to launch your campaign, submit the business profile because, in my experience, it has helped with uh, A2P being um, registered. Okay. Now, if you're making a lot of calls, you should set this up. Uh, by a lot of calls, I mean probably over two or 300 a day, you could set this up. Or another uh, kind of workaround for this is when your number gets marked, when your go high level number gets marked as spam, delete the number and then just set up another phone number and start calling from that one. That's what I do. Um, I, I've, I've uh, made hundreds of calls per sub account for real estate clients before my number gets marked as spam after like two or three days. And what I've done, Delete the number, buy a new one, good to go. It causes some issues with texting. So if you're running a lot of text automations, uh, that might not be a viable workaround, and you might just have to do this. Okay, now A2P. So once your business profile is registered, th that is when I would actually register for A2P. Now, when do you need this and when do you ne do not need it? So if you're running texts to the U.S. or Canada, it says U.S. only, but I've heard Canada as well. Um, maybe it's changed. A2P is, it's old, but the requirement of A2P is brand new. Um, so double check me. Things could change since making this video. But if you're running text to the U.S. or Canada, 
text campaigns, even if they're just appointment, appointment reminders, if you're sending out texts, definitely register uh, for your A2P. And this is very, it's, it's very basic, it's very simple, but you will need information from your client. So if they're a sole proprietor and they don't have um, a tax ID, you would just select this and it will allow you to register as a sole proprietor. Or if they do have a tax ID, an EIN, um, then you can just select yes and then go through it uh, this way. Now, segments, segments are basically texts. I don't think any of us are going to be sending 600,000 texts a day. If we, if you are, that's amazing. You've got some, some serious cash flow coming in most likely. Um, but so everybody just needs to select low volume. If you're running um, just standard campaigns for your clients, um, text blast, th this is even uh, sufficient for a very large database reactivation because you're going to be spreading out your DR um, over a week or two weeks or even longer than that if it's if it's a, a large DR. So just select low volume here um, and then just fill out the, the information required. Now, again, um, if you're not sending texts um, or if you're only sending like a handful of texts every, like a handful of texts a week, you don't need to register for this. But if you're nurturing leads through text, you do need to register uh, for this. Now, another thing, um, to note is if you guys are buying phone numbers in different areas, like I know Australia is very strict with with uh, what they require. I don't even know an Australian area code. Let's see. Oh, there we go. So I don't know which of these phone numbers looks like a real person would be buying it. Um, I'm just not familiar with Australian phone numbers, but if this is like a traditional cell phone from, you know, in Australia, that's what you would want to purchase. You'd want to purchase one that looks like, like it's coming from a real person, like your friend's calling you, your friend got a new number and they're calling you. Purchase a phone number that looks like that. So like, I know at least in the U.S., a 1-800 number is not going to look like a real person. I would never answer that call. A lot of people are going to ignore a call. I don't know if that's the case for Australia, but um, you guys get the point, right? So let's purchase a cheap phone number here, and it's going to tell me that I need to um, create a regulatory bundle and address. So we'll go ahead and click this. And it's this isn't just Australia. Um, I know France is like this. I think Germany is like this. Um, a few other locations, but you will have to come in here and you will have to create um, everything that they require in order to get um, your phone number registered. Now, again, I would just register uh, everything under your client's information. If they are uncomfortable uh, with giving you guys this information, uh, just screen share it, tell them you have to be compliant um, and you can do it in the onboarding call. But I would definitely use your client's information and not your information. Um, for a number of reasons, but get both of these set up and uh, it, there is a wait time on this. It, it could take uh, a number of weeks. I've seen two weeks, so you will have to get that set up right away.